This video is the restoration of a 1961 Zundep Combinet 428 with a 265 engine. The paintwork doesn't look too bad on it at the present time. Although the petrol tank, all the chrome is after coming off of it. Most of the parts are on the bike. The only thing that I've noticed that's missing is the... There's a chain guard rubber goes here. And there should be a stand attached on there. Zundap Motor Company were in Germany and they made loads of different models of the Zundap Combinet and this is type 428 so I'm going to be stripping it with a view to restoring it back to hopefully a very good condition Uh, this is some sort of a protection cover here. I've just taken off one screw off of it, which screws in there. And there's a wing nut type unit here, which on the other side of it has a spring. Now, I don't know what it's for at the present time, but it's even difficult to get it out because there's a, there's a little lug on the back of it. There, you can see the spring, and that's it. As I say, I don't know what the purpose of that mechanism is, but maybe as I go through restoring the bike, it'll become evident. I can see the carburetor in there, and I notice from from the book of spare parts oh, it looks as if it looks as if it connects into that there to get the air into it but maybe not um, I'll have to check again in the book this appears to be where the tool kit was stored in there there's a nice little bit of storage and there's a lifting handle at the other side and that's part of it there so those bolts have to be taken off to get it off the saddle is in a bad condition we'll have to replace that now I think I'll restore it fully I was going to maybe just clean it off and uh, see how it would be but I'm not a great fan of rust and just out of taking off the plug um, I just want to see whether the piston is seriously stuck on that and uh, I tried working the pedal but the pedal just keeps going around and around so uh, I don't know whether that's some sort of a neutral situation or what. When you pedal it backwards, it operates the brake. All right. So I'll take the head off and you might see there's four bolts on it. Just taken off the top head there now. Put the nuts and bolts in the in a bag. And that's what it looks like. Piston doesn't look too bad in there anyway. But I'm going to have to take off that lower head as well to see if I can get the piston out. I'm going to put some GT7 spray on it. Get it to um, free out a bit. Do the carburetor bolts as well. 
I find this stuff much better than uh, WD-40, it's called Tech 7 GT7 Multispray. Uh, it's available here in Ireland, I'm not sure about anywhere else, probably the UK as well. Right, that's the carburetor off. And it'll be nice when it's cleaned up. Now I've just noticed that there's there should be a filter here, which isn't on the bike. And from the spare parts list I can see them all there. The air filter, the uh, gasket holding mechanism for holding it in place. Uh, this kind of a cone, I think it's plastic. And there's another um, nut and bolt holds that in place. And as far as I know, it goes on to that tube there, which is part of the frame. It's hard to see it there now, but there's a tube in there. Right, I managed to loosen it there. Uh, that actually is just an engine bolt there. And it's coming up pretty easy, which is brilliant in actual fact. Um, the piston isn't seized anyway on this head, um, but I don't know what's going on here with this um, with the pedals. There may be something gone wrong with that in there. So I had hoped I wouldn't have to take the engine apart, but it looks as if I will. The board is perfect inside, isn't it? Perfect. Now that's that's a real bonus to have that in good shape and the piston looks perfect as well. There's a lot of mileage on the clock so it's quite possible that the piston may have been changed at some stage. Um, I'm not sure. There's um, 18,726 it shows. That's a lot of mileage for a moped. And there were probably miles back in the day. And the good news continues. The Conrad is moving. Uh, the piston rings are perfect as well. So that's an absolutely brilliant bonus for me. But I don't like the idea of opening uh, the engine. But look, we'll have a go at it anyway and see how we get on. I had already bought some stuff for this uh, Zundap. I bought it back in 2014, but I haven't had a chance to get around to restoring it. And I was just looking up at what bits and pieces I required to buy. And uh, I just realized that I was after buying the uh, tank stickers. And I had bought... The head shell on it is very bad, so I was already out of buying one. There's one or two small little dings on it, but I might be able to get them out of it. I had bought a bell. I bought two of them actually. One is a bit on the rusty side. It's an original one. This is probably a replica. And I bought this piece, which is missing off of there. So... What I'm doing at the moment now is I'm actually after taking off the, the head and uh, I'm just going to take the exhaust pipe off now if I can get at the, the bolts there because I want to check the dimensions of it and order one. Another issue that came up, um, I went to try and get somebody to re-chrome the petrol tank and it appears that for some reason now something to do with explosive gases and stuff like that which just baffles me uh, uh, that they can't I mean this petrol tank has been empty for years and years and it should be able to be cleaned out and uh, redone but for some reason uh, most crowds now doing chroming won't do petrol tanks now I'm just after taking off the engine holding bracket it's bolted through there and it's bolted through the engine this is what it's like. There are two kind of rubber items there, one on either end. One is outside and the other one seems to be inside. But 
I'll have to check and see if that's the correct way of doing it. Now I'm actually taking the carburetor, I've just undone the two nuts and I'm taking off the carburetor. So that opens up the top part of the head. I don't think there's anything else holding it in place. There is a bolt here which is loose. Um, it appears to be one of the engine bolts but I'll take it out anyway just in case that it actually is holding this head. So I'll try and prise that head off now. I'm just taking off this um, cover piece here. Uh, there's a bolt holding it here, here and here. So I've just taken them out. And now we can see where the um, there's a kind of a plastic piece comes off of the carburetor which is here and it co connects onto that there. So now I can see the I can see the fixing of the um, exhaust pipe down there but I still can't get at it properly. I'm just undoing the right hand pedal there now. I've knocked out the pin out of it and I've taken it off. I'll put it into the box with the rest of the stuff. And I will take off the one at the other side. I still haven't taken off the brake because it keeps spinning around on me. So I am just taking off one of the springs there at the back. I normally wouldn't do it at this stage now, but I'm kind of finished, except for taking off the brake <coughs> at this side of the bike. And uh, it's bolted in there, and it's bolted in there, and it appears to be about 250 millimeters. I'll get this off now, and I'll be able to measure it. Because I need to, I need to order two new ones. The chrome is completely gone on it. So, yeah, it's roughly 253 to 255. Yeah, it's probably 255. So, I'm just going to do the cover at the other side now that was there. I don't know what this screw here is for. I must go and look at the parts book. Uh, it might be to do with keeping the mud guard on up there at that section. Okay. I'm just taking off the uh, throttle there. And something very unusual happened, which has never happened before. The grip actually came off <coughs> completely intact without having to cut it to get it off. If I wanted it to happen, it wouldn't happen at all. But. It seems to be a bit seized onto the handlebar, so I'll have to get some penetrating oil, I think, to um, help it to come off. Now that's the throttle coming off. You have to loosen that um, nut on it there to release the pressure on the handlebars and then prise it ever so slightly to get it out, but very carefully. So I'll take off that little mirror that's on it there now as well, just like something you get in a butt cage. You wouldn't see much with that if you were driving along the road. So that's the mirror and the uh, throttle and front brake mechanism. There's the, the little uh, mirror, the throttle cable and the throttle itself. Now I'm just going to take off the number plate, there's two little bolts there. So I'll take that off next before I turn it around the other side to get at the other side. Right, there's no panel on this side, on the left hand side like there was at the other side. And um, there are some bolts, four bolts holding on the petrol tank. This is one of them, I just took it off. There appears to be some sort of a rubber there. There's one there and one at the other side on both sides. So I think I'll take the tank off next. Right, the bolt on the 
front of the tank goes right through from one end to the other and there are two kind of rubber I think they're rubber um, cushiony things that um, sit up against the tank itself there so that goes right through the other ones are just uh, on each side there's one at each side I must do the other one now now that's the tank off and it looks to me as if the bike may have been painted that dark blue color at some stage it seems to be a kind of a turquoise blue color the original so that's what we'll paint it back as the turquoise color I'm just dismantling the clutch there and uh, I'll have to see if I can get the gear change off as well because um, I need to turn the bike upside down to kick the wheels off well I don't necessarily need to do it but it can be handy to do that so No, I'd still have to try and get that out if I can get the gear change off of it but that only comes off once you get it off so I have to disconnect it off of the engine so this is it here it's going down through a bracket there on the thing and it's attached there so I'll probably have to press that thing forward to try and get it off the gear it's um that the gear change yeah the other one was the clutch which is that one there right I managed to get it off by turning the handlebars over completely to get some slack on the cable so now it's after coming off you can't actually push that thing because that's the gear lever and it may be stuck inside the clutch I should probably be able to push that in all right I don't really need to do it anyway because I have it taken off up here on top I'm just taking off the rear section of the um, chain guard there there's probably should be a bolt on it there but it's not on it and there's one other bolt here so I've taken that off and off it comes that's it again now I can see for definite that the bike was repainted because there's a paint run there on it so now I must try and get the other section of mud guard off I don't see how it's attached so I'll have to try and figure it out I might go and look at the parts book and see what uh, what it says about it this is the dynamo cover here and it's held down with those two bolts I've just taken them out they came out pretty handy thanks be to God so two six five oh one one two five it's in good condition anyway so I'll be able to clean it off there's the dynamo there sprocket sprocket looks to be good as well so this chain cover anyway is the next thing I must try and get that off I've just taken off the light there um, <coughs> I was hitting the thing with, with the, the compression Thing because I couldn't get it to move now I got most of the little nut out but some of it stayed inside so I'll have to drill it out but at least I've got the light off anyway and I've just taken the bulb out of it there the wire is actually attached to the back of the bulb so that's what's going on in there I'll have to get a wiring diagram for it anyway. I know that that's not the correct switch. It's working well, but it's not the correct switch for it. So we'll get a we'll get the correct switch for it. 
I'm just taking off the lifting handle there which is at the other side and it's a 14mm socket so there's just a small little nut in there and there's a much longer one here So that's it. Compression washer, a nut and a spacer. And then the lifting handle itself. I've taken off the light switch there now. And I'm now going to undo that little nut there that holds on the speedometer. And strangely enough, um, the speedometer appears to be attached to the engine. Um, I'm more used to doing NSU quicklies, and they all have a speedo drive down here. But it appears to be the engine in this Zundap Combinet 4 to 8. Taking out the speedometer didn't go so good, I'm afraid. I don't know what it was, but it just would not come out of it. I know it's quite rusty here and there, all right, but... Anyway, it's out now, but it's in uh, a sorry state, unfortunately, but uh, I have several of them anyway. There are two bolts holding the exhaust bracket there, and I can't get at them. So I'm going to take off the rear brake arm there next just to clear things up a bit and then I might be able to get at it. I've just taken off the front sprocket. Um, it appears there was something here but it broke. Uh, I don't know. It's some sort of a washer. Maybe it's two half washers, I don't really know. I'll hang on to them anyway. I must check the book. Um, then there was a, a locking washer here, and then there was the nut on the outside of it. It was just so that I could release the chain so that I can get the engine off. But I've noticed that the other side of the engine, there's a bolt there which terminates somewhere in there. There seems to be some sort of a, a light plate here. There's two screws that I've opened, one, two, and the third one is probably an engine one, but I'll open that now as well and see if it comes off. Actually, there's another one down at the bottom there. Right, that's the little plate after coming off, so you can see the nut of the other side of the engine there now. <clears throat> and two of the uh, bolts, I think they're probably the uh, engine bolts because they're very long. And then there was two very small little screws came out as well. So I'll keep all those together now to make sure that I know what I'm doing when I'm putting it back together. Now I've just taken off the engine. There was another bolt going through there and right through in here it's uh, screwed into that. There is no bolt at the other side of that mechanism. There's just two nuts already uh, welded on. So I have that off now. Uh, I must take off the speedometer cable off of it now and I must take off the brake off of it as well. I've turned it sideways here and I noticed that the carrier is actually the bolts holding it are there, so I'll try and take that off next. But to take off the wheels, I'm after turning it upside down. Uh, it's the easiest way to take off or to get the rest, get at the rest of it from what I can see. But then that's just my opinion. 
Now that's the rear wheel off. Um, it's a 23 by 2 and a quarter tire that's on it, which is what's supposed to be on it. And it's it says Dunlop Auto Cycle. I must have a look. It could have been made in Ireland because an awful lot of uh, Dunlop tires were made in Ireland. Now I was just checking the tire there just as a matter of interest to see where it was made and it wasn't made in Ireland these ones were actually made in Great Britain so they must have been making Dunlop tires over there as well in the Ford or the Dunlop factories here in Cork we had a Ford plant and we had a Dunlop plant back in the 1950s I think Anyway, I must get on with my dismantling. So the rim tape and everything on that is pretty good. And they're aluminium. They're aluminium rims, so they don't rust. It's just a matter of giving them a good clean off. And I'll have to get new spokes as well. They're pretty rusty. And just after releasing the bolt down or holding the swing arm, that's it there. That's the nut at the opposite side. Now I have to figure out how to get it off. And in actual fact, the um, chain guard for the the actual chain guard itself is part of the whole unit. Right, so. I've got to take the mud guard off to get it off. Now I've just taken off the front wheel there. While I was fiddling with the other thing, I'm still figuring out how to get that back mud guard off. Anyway, <coughs> what I'll do is I'll um, I'll take the tire off of this now as well, like I did with the rear one, and then I'll take off the front mud guard and possibly this uh, handlebars swing at them and then I'll get back to take the saddle off and then I should be able to get the rear mud guard off there's an awful lot of bolts and things going through it so we'll get back to that later so the next thing I'm going to do is take off the front mud guard I've taken off the mud well I'm taking off the mud guard there are two bolts one at each side holding it there and there's two 10 mil bolts there holding it there and the mud guard is free now to come off now I'm just out of taking off this um, decoration kind of a piece here there was two bolts going on there onto those two brackets there so I think I'll take off the uh, suspension units there now the swing swing kind of uh, units for the there are springs in there as well right I'm knocking out the two bolts there what <laughs> Uh, there's a little kind of a sleeve after coming out there as well, so I just need to drive the rest of it out um, And there's no sleeve on this one at the moment and I'm just looking at the book Three nine six six three nine six seven they appear to be t the two bolts that I'm taking out and then there are 3956 there are two bolts going down into something holding the um, holding the spring so that has to be taken off as well those two there so I just punch them out now and see what uh, what the component parts are now that's the uh, suspension units out and this bolt here appears to be for compressing the springs to get more more tension on them um, 
I'll have to see all that now when I'm putting it all back together later on when I have it all sorted. So the next thing I'm going to take off now is to try and take off the handlebars and the light. Um, actually I might try to take off the rear mudguard first and the swing arm and it might be easier to deal with it then. Um, I've decided to take off the handlebars before the back mudguard so I'm just undoing. There's two bracket type units there that hold uh, the handlebars in place and I've undone the nuts holding the headlamp unit as well so right I'll continue taking them out and then the handlebars will come off and then I should be able to get well I'll have to undo that nut there to get the headlamp off so it'll it'll be a process <coughs> Now there are the two bracket units holding the handlebars in place and then these bolts here actually release these lower sections. Take that out. That releases them. There are the two bolts. So now I can take the front swing arm off. Right, I'm taking off the uh, cap nut there, and it's a 32 mil spanner. It's after loosening now. Right, what does it say on the book? There's a cap nut, there's some sort of a washer, another type of washer, don't know what that is, some sort of a ball race. Uh, not clear what those things are, they, it'll become clearer now as I take it apart. I'll take off that nut first anyway. Nut and washer has released the head unit, the headlight unit. So, that's that. What have we got here? It's a special type of washer. It's a kind of a lock washer, but uh, not like the quicklies. Well, I suppose it is. It the quickly ones that are hexagonal. This one is round. Oh, I see it. It's actually. Uh, that holds the ball bearings in place or a race or whatever it is right I'm pulling out the swing arm there now and I've just pulled out the uh, the first race which is they're all together and there's another race down there so I should be able to put it up pull it off there now okay so now I know what all the parts are that are showing up here on the list. We have 4620, which is the cap nut. 4619 is the washer. 4621 is the lock nut. 4618 is this uh, cone race up here on top, which is attached to the top there. Uh, 3907 is the top ball race. Uh, 565. I don't know what 565 is. Uh, I would reckon 565 and 4614 are the bottom, the bottom uh, cone race there. Uh, 4613 is the bottom, the bottom race. And 4612 must be the bottom part that's attached there. Now down inside there, I thought it was actually mud and dirt, but they're actually, uh, it's actually a kind of some sort of a rubber uh, that the uh, spring sits on or the, or the um, this unit here. So I have to, to get them out. Uh, there seems to be some sort of a, for all the world like a rivet. 
it only seems to be on one side there's a hole there and a hole there and a rivet on one side there so I'll just pop them out anyway and see what they're like but they're not actually shown on the spare parts list at all which is unusual okay so now I know what all the parts are that are showing up here on the list we have 4620 which is the cabinet 4619 is the washer 4621 is the lock nut 4618 is this uh, cone race up here on top which is attached to the top there uh, 3907 is the top ball race uh, 565 I don't know what 565 is. Uh, I would reckon 565 and 4614 are the bottom, the bottom uh, cone race there. Uh, 4613 is the bottom, the bottom race, and 4612 must be the bottom part that's attached there. Right, I got them out. Uh, they're just small rubber kind of dampers and they have a little yoke there that uh, you rivet on the outside um, I don't know if it's possible to get them or buy them but um, I'll have to check and see right uh, finally this rear mudguard and swing arm I'm just taking off the saddle there um, I think it was a 16 mil nut that I was opening so I think it's nearly off right I'll take that off there now right I'm just taking off this um, I don't know what it is really it's um, I've just taken off the bolt and you can see down into the frame, but what purpose it serves, I have no idea. Okay, I've undone the two screws there now. And it appears to be the saddle unit, all one. And there's an adjuster there where you can adjust it up and down. So let's have a look inside here yeah there's a grand bit of storage space there but there's no real access to it so a bit useless really it would be better off if there was a door at the side there how you could access it you know now the whole thing is out to coming apart um, I actually cut the bolt off of it because it was it was too hard to get it off so the bolt was uh, at the end of that there so the swing arm now is after coming off and the mudguard I think is after separating. Yes. Right, that's the mudguard. The swing arm. This is some sort of a clot that's actually uh, riveted on there might be a canvas or something I don't really know okay if I'm going to get it powder coated I'll have to um, I think I will get it powder coated if you can do it um, it's a, la a long lasting job so I'll have to try and take that off somehow because uh, that wouldn't stand up to 1400 degrees right I must take off the tail out of that now now I'm after taking off the rivets off of the uh, canvas that's on the it's a kind of a chain cover and they appear to be some sort of brass they're very light material anyway because they were very easy to get off <coughs> and there's kind of little plates holding it on and that's it it's uh, 
I don't know what would you call it. It's it's some sort of a plastic rubber kind of a material, but it's not in bad shape. I think we'll be able to reuse it once I clean it off. So I've straightened up some little bits and pieces. I have another small bit to do there. There was a few bumps and dents on it. I straightened the one there. And I must try and do a small bit with that there as well before I take it to powder coating. Uh, the frame. I've got the mud guards there now. I took off the taillight. And <coughs> I've got all the other things in the box there to go to powder coating. And I think I'm going to use... Um, that's if the powder quarter can get it RAL 1015 for the mud guards and the side of the petrol tank here because I can't get it chromed <coughs> and I was thinking of doing that blue color RAL 5019 on it but I actually think I'm going to change the color of it to red and hopefully it'll be RAL 3000 or something like that, but I'll update that when it's done anyway. And the last thing was the uh, strip that was on the petrol tank here. It's riveted in place there. And there are two little lugs there. And they clip in under this little uh, clip here that goes there like so. And then it's riveted down at the bottom. So that's going to pour the coil as well. They're all going to pour the coating.